I'm just a bit of admin first off. Just on the players who are cup tied and, and can and can't play tomorrow, is it just Regan Paul who, who's unavailable? Obviously, Regan and Morgan. Obviously, Morgan can't play in the whole game. So, um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, Cohen and uh, Max are, are able to be involved. Just looking through your record and Lee Johnson's record in the AFL Trophy, you're both obviously managers that have taken this competition seriously down the years and have had success in, in getting through to uh, finals in this competition. Why do you think that is for, for you two as managers? Why do you think you two have had success in this competition? Um, you know, to be fair, I mean, obviously you mentioned the fact of sort of taking it seriously. I think um, you've got to have a balance. There's a, there's a balance between sort of picking... A, a, a strong team, but then a realization of that there's a lot of games uh, in the league, either before the game or after the game, that you've got to take care of. I just think it's a it's a good competition for sort of players who deserve an opportunity to play. In it. And if you're playing well at that moment in time, they're not necessarily out of the team because they've been playing poorly or they've done something wrong or they've been injured. It sometimes it can be just the fact that the the person who's keeping them out of the team is playing really, really well. Um, and our attitude towards the, the competition has always been, it's not the FA Cup, it's not the League Cup where you can go on a run and eventually someone's going to beat you because they're better than you uh, and they've got a bigger squad, etc, etc. Now, yes, there's examples of that in League 1, League 2, but let's face it, and try and make a good example, anybody who ends up... Well, Anybody who enters it, anyone who's in League One, League Two can win this competition. And that's quite rare, really, you know, to have a competition that, you know, 46 teams, uh, no, 48 teams who enter the, tip of the competition can actually win it. Uh, the last time you reached the final, it was a, a goal scoring affair in the semis. Last time Lincoln reached the final, it was a cagey affair that went to, to penalties. How are you going to approach this one, bearing in mind your uh, experience in this competition in the past? Yeah, I'm not really, you know, even though maybe one or two results might suggest that I'm not really a cagey person. And I think early on in my management career, that cost me. I drew a lot of games because I was too adventurous. And you could argue the other night was a prime example of that. But ultimately, that's how I like to set out. And that's how I like my teams to, to play, to try and go and attack and score goals. And I think um, Sunderland have not been short of scoring goals of late. Um, especially one person, so um, I don't see it being Casey or a, uh, a game that's going to be lacking in goals, if I'm being mm -hmm. honest, so I think it's going to be uh, hopefully an exciting game for the neutral. How do you deflect your players away from the thought that they're one game away from playing Wembley, or do you encourage that thought? Personally, I encourage it. Yeah, personally, I know it's not for everybody and people do it differently, but you know the reality is is that you know, whether it's with fans or no fans, it's a fantastic surface to play on. It's a fantastic stadium to 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 uh, spend the day at, and um, it's a good opportunity for some of those lads who haven't experienced that. And um, I've obviously lost a couple of finals there with big, big crowds, over seventy thousand in both competition, both finals, and it wasn't a particularly great experience, but it was an experience that I've had, Rob, and. If I'd lost in both the semi-finals, it was an experience that I'll never have, you know, to look back on. And um, there's one thing losing in finals, but there's another thing losing in the semi-final that which nobody wants. But Charlie White, as you've mentioned, is one of those players who, who's banging form at, at the moment. He, he played against Lincoln, of course, in that defeat earlier on in the season as well. How do you stop a player who is scoring so many goals at the moment? Very difficult. Um, the most sort of simplistic way to answer your, 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 your question really is try and stop the source. You know, so obviously a lot of these goals that come from wide areas and come from crosses and come from one or two certain players in the team. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that that would be the starting point. Make sure you try and stop the source and stop the cross coming into the box. But then you've got to be really aggressive. You've got to be marked. You've got to mark him really tight and. He's probably going to win more more headers than he loses in the box, but it's the type of header he gets and whether he gets full contact and whether it's a clean header. And I think if uh, you can be competitive and put him off, then you give, you give yourself a chance of maybe you keeper saving it or you're dealing with a second one. 
And for Lincoln as well, in, in Tom Hopper, he started to, to find the back of the net with more regularity. We know the hard work he puts in, and you've always spoken this season about you, you prefer to see him do the hard work than maybe get 20 goals a season. But what do you think the, the recent goal scoring runs down to? Is that a change in style from him or a change in style from you? No, I think um, I think if you look at Hops, and he'll probably agree, I think he's been in good positions certainly early on in the season. And... Um, I think probably is. I think we're up there. We must be up there with probably the majority of sides in the league, or if not, being the top two uh, balls that flash across the face of goal. Uh, I don't see too many sides in the division where you think to yourself, "Sure, that's a tapping." The amount of times I've stood there on the sideline and going tapping, 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 and I've seen the ball flash across the goal. I think what Tom has done is he's made a real effort to get across the near post in wide areas, and then obviously. His goal the other night was just being clever, recognising where the ball might end up and where George is going to sort of play it to. So I think the goals have been there in terms of if he really wanted to score them. I think what's happened is he's concentrated so much hard on working hard for us and, and sort of doing the graft. Um, I think all of a sudden now he wants to get a little bit of the limelight himself and get on the end of things and he's reaping his rewards for it. Uh, Harry Anderson's obviously the only Lincoln player remaining from the last time they they reached Wembley. Are you going to lean on his expertise a little bit in this situation? Um, yeah, possibly, but I think there's a, there's a few players in the squad who have played there um, and uh, won big games in this situation. Obviously, H, in terms of his personality, is a huge personality in the, in the group anyway. Whether he's in the team or out of the team, he, he's the same. Harry, you know, if he's disappointed or frustrated, he very, very rarely lets it show. You know, he's a great person to have around. And, um, yeah, he'll be certainly one that will be as vocal as anyone before the game going into the, going into the game tomorrow. And will he be practising penalties today? I No, and, and they won't be... I, they will, because they do it every single day after the training and, you know, regardless of the game. So, there's always three or four players who are out there for five, five or ten minutes with the keepers probably having a little bit of a crack and a joke that, that who can score what, but um, there'd be no pressure for me to practice and there hasn't been throughout the season. We've done okay in the, in the penalty shootout. So if it ever got to that touch, would hopefully it'll be the same. For me, Robbie, it just comes down to a feeling on the day and how confident players are. And the one thing I suppose I have done so far and I will continue is, you know, I take that choice away from them. So, you know, as they come off the pitch after the 90 minutes, they know who the first five are and what number they're going at. So. Uh, and finally, what would it mean to you to reach Wembley again? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a brilliant occasion. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I don't want to take it away from me. I'd love the opportunity to, to try and win the competition again. You know, obviously, I've had a couple of opportunities and we've done brilliant to get to the finals with, with Oxford and we fell short of the final hurdle. Uh, I'd just love the opportunity to. To go and do that and have the opportunity to do it again and um, yeah, hopefully the, the players can deliver tomorrow and uh, do whatever is necessary to get through.